Hey folks, PK here. Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple DIY kayak light. This is a kayak stern light. And a lot of people are getting into kayak fishing. So if you need a stern light, I'm going to show you how to build it. It's really easy. Um, it's not very expensive. Um, so let's get started. Actually, let me uh, plug it in. Let me plug in the light. Let me get my battery. So I just finished it. And here's my battery right here. And I'll plug it in. And oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so this is a stern light. I'm gonna show you how to build. Uh, you can get all these parts online. I'll put a link below, okay? So um, it's just a PVC pipe, uh, 40 inches uh, tall. You have your, let me pick this up. You have your base mount here, which is really easy to make. You have um, your PVC coupler and a PVC pipe. I'm using a uh, one inch. Um, I like the one inch because it's just easier to grip, easier to screw into the track mount. So yeah, this is a really cool light for your kayak and it, didn't, it doesn't take very long to build it. And if I can do it, you can do it. It's very, very easy. So let's get started. So for the part list, you guys are gonna need a one and a half inch shrink tubing, 16 gauge wires, spade connectors, shrink tubing for 16 gauge wires, two 5 8 inch screws, a 12 volt light bulb, LED light bulb. Again, this is 12 volt. Make sure it is not AC. Don't use AC light bulbs. And I have a Edison 26 socket light bulb holder. Again, this is for 12 volt. And make sure you don't use any AC. So Edison 26 12 volt bulb holder and I have a one inch PVC coupler and I got a one inch schedule 40 PVC pipe you can make it any length you want and this is going to be the power source I'm using a 12 volt 8 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery so before you begin it's always very important to test the light bulb to make sure it works um, so I got the light bulb screwed in here and I'm going to connect the positive to the red and then the black to the negative. And as you can see, it's working really nice. And I have a quarter inch 20 thread bolt and nut. Uh, this is a, it's got a flat head um, that's going to fit the um, track mount. I think these are called like toilet bolts or a closet bolt. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the screw into this PVC coupler. And then I'm going to mix the epoxy together and I'm going to stuff it into the uh, PVC coupler. And the coupler has a ring in the middle. Uh, just make sure when you put the epoxy in there, it doesn't go past that ring. Because uh, your pole is going to be inserted from the top. And you don't want anything to obstruct it. So we're going to knead the epoxy together. And you want to mix it really well. Make sure you're wearing gloves when you're doing this. Okay, that should be enough. And we're gonna take some of it and make it into a ball. And we're gonna shove that right through there, just like that. And then we're just gonna mold it onto that bolt. Then we're gonna put it inside the coupler Get it in there. We're gonna take a little bit more. Roll it into a long piece. Get it in there. And you want to pack that epoxy right inside that coupler. Okay, so you go to the other side, straighten out that bolt, and then just use your finger and pack it right in there 
Sorry, it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of dark. But the challenge you will face is keeping that bolt kind of straight. But it's okay. The epoxy is soft. You can uh, bend it any way you like. Okay, going to get a little bit more. And you can see the uh, halfway mark there. Just don't go past that mark. Okay, so we're going to check and we're going to make sure that bolt is kind of center. And you're not going to get it like perfectly center. That's okay. We're not looking for perfection. Just as long as you get it close enough, you're good to go. Okay, so there's the bottom. And you want to make sure there is no epoxy protruding above that surface. If there is, like right here, you want to kind of get your finger and try to flatten that out. And you have about, depending on which epoxy you use, you have between 5 and 10 minutes to work with the epoxy before it hardens. Because once it hardens, you really can't do anything. Um, you're kind of stuck. So kind of work fast. So there it is. Uh, the epoxy does generate a little bit of heat. And I can feel it getting hardened right now. So I'm going to work a little bit faster and try to get that feet, I guess we'll call it. That, get that feet kind of flush, kind of flat. And I think we are good there. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty hard right now. I really can't mush it anymore. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to make, you want to twist that bolt. Make sure it can turn. Okay, so it can turn pretty good right there. So that was roughly about five minutes, and it's already hard. So that's what we're looking for, um, just like that. So we're going to leave that set. We're going to let it alone for about 15 minutes, and it should be pretty hard. So let's go on to the next step. All right, I'm going to use uh, my PVC pipe here. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to just make it 40 inches. I think that's plenty enough for my stern light. Okay, just like that. Okay, now we're going to cut the wires. Um, I measured the PVC pipe as 40 inches, but I'm going to give the wire uh, a little bit longer so it's easier to work with. I'm going to go by 60 inches on the wire. Okay, now I'm going to connect the wires from the bulb to the wire that leads to the battery. And I'm going to use these heat shrink tubes. I also have another heat shrink tube that I'm going to put over this just to make sure that it gets a really good water seal. And we're going to connect the two wires together. Um, I'm just going to mesh them together like that. And then twist them up. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to slide, we'll slide the heat shrink tube right over that sucker. And it, the heat shrink tube has solder on there. So we're going to make sure that goes right over the center like that. And then we're going to use a heat gun and we're going to heat up the joints. We're going to heat up that uh, heat shrink tube and it's going to fuse the wires together. And when you guys are melting this, you want to make sure you melt the center first. That way you can get out all the any air bubbles. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole in the PVC pipe um, near the base. That way I can uh, put my wire through that hole. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine how long of the uh, one and a half inch shrink tubing I need. Um, so let's see. Uh, I think right about there should be good enough. So probably about three inches. Now let's go a bit longer. Let's go. Let's go right here. Now with this wire that I connected, I am going to just put it inside the pole, the PVC pipe, 
and just make it go all the way in. It's going to come out the other side. And that's about it right there. The uh, bulb housing here is roughly about one and a half, sorry, one inch, pretty much the same diameter as the PVC pipe. Just slightly bigger, but not too much. And this shrink tube we're going to put over the housing and the PVC pipe. And what we're going to do is we're just going to melt this and then it's going to shrink and it's going to seal that housing right on the PVC pipe. So we're going to pull this wire through here and I'm going to insert it back in. But before I do that, I'm going to twist the wires together. So come on. like that and we're gonna go back inside and pull that through doesn't want to come out there we go that was easy okay just like that pull it back through okay and we are done right there and then we have our uh, base mount that we made all right, make sure that can turn and it can. And then we're just gonna put it right there. Now for this one, you can use PVC glue if you want. You can make a permanent or you can put a bolt right through here and put a nut on the other side and cinch it tight. It's up to you. Okay guys, so now we have to connect the ends of the wire to the spade connector. And we're gonna twist this wire bunch it up, twist it really tight, and then we're going to insert it into this connector right here, just like that. And then we are going to get our pliers. Um, we have a 16 gauge wire, so we'll use the middle slot. Okay, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, this won't go over that but which is fine so we're gonna melt this not melt it we're gonna heat it up and that'll shrink and wrap around that wire we'll do the same thing to the negative wire so now we are going to heat up the shrink tube And finally, there it is, all done. Okay, folks, we are done with the kayak stern light. Okay, there it is, and there's my base mount. It turns, so that's gonna work nice. And then we have the wire that's coming out of that hole. There is the uh, connectors, the spade connectors. These are pretty strong. I actually had like three heat shrink tubing there because I want to make sure that joint is very secure because I'm going to be pulling this in and out of the battery um, a lot. So I want to make sure I don't rip that uh, connection right there. All right. And then um, I the uh, pole, I have about 40 inches and then I got about another um, 20 inches for the wire. Okay. And then there is the housing right there. And then you have the heat shrink tube, the one and a half inch heat shrink tube. Connect it there, and that's not moving. That's very, very firm, okay? And then for your light bulb, this one here, you just screw that in, okay? Also, the, the good thing about this uh, light pole is uh, you can switch out the bulb if you want. I think this one is uh, oh, 10, 10 watt or something, maybe 10 or 12 watt. Okay, this one I believe is an eight watt, but don't quote me on that. So they're different size. Obviously the bigger ones can be brighter. So it's interchangeable. If you want a brighter one, use, uh, use a bigger bulb. Again, make sure these parts are DC components. 
do not buy AC components. Okay. Uh, remember, if you, if you use a bigger light, um, it's probably going to drain more battery, obviously. Okay. So whatever you want. And then let's test it out. So let's screw that in. And then we have our battery here. Let's plug that sucker in. Uh, it's like that. I think when you guys make this, you're really going to like it because it's just so bright. Um, I go out early morning, way before sunrise in the dark. And you can actually use this just to have a light to see, you know, like just like a big lamp. It's really nice. And then, oh, there it is. See that? So it is bright, guys. This is a very, very good stern light for your kayak. Okay. 360 degree. And the Coast Guard requirement is two nautical miles visibility. This is way beyond that. We're talking for probably beyond five miles. Very, very bright. And I'll show you some footage here of uh, this light on my kayak. Not this one, but my older uh, light. And you can see it's so bright. It's super bright. You can see it from very far distance. And, you know, in the dark, it, it also acts as a lamp. So pretty cool. Now, lastly, I want to talk about flags. This is my older, not my old, this is my old uh, kayak light. And as you can see, I have a flag on here. And it's really easy to do. If you guys want to put a flag on here, what I did is uh, I put a, I think there's a number 10 bolt. I drill it and then I put on this side a, uh, a nut uh, with, with a nylon uh, washer. Not a nylon washer, but a, a nylon nut, and then a, a fender washer, and then um, I got another one here, so that secures a flag onto the light, and this just makes it ex just gives you more uh, visibility. Okay, um, this is just a regular uh, flag you can buy off Amazon. I got like two for about like, ten bucks. Um, so if you want more visibility, the flag is a good idea. I'm going to put a flag on this one later on. Okay. But anyways, uh, that is the end of the video. So I hope you guys like it. Um, be sure to like, share, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Have fun fishing. Tight lines.